Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods. Before we jump into Build Science 301 and all things control layers, I want to take just two minutes to highlight something that deserves more attention in our industry, fire protection. We talk a lot about air, water, vapor, and thermal, but what about fire as a control layer? That's where FirePoint from Arklin comes in. FirePoint is an advanced fire resistant sheathing that's engineered to give you serious performance without slowing down your build. It offers up to 53% more fire resistance than code requires, helping to slow flame spread, buy time for evacuation, and give first responders better access when it matters most. This is a solution designed for builders and architects who want real fire performance without sacrificing efficiency. The base of FirePoint is real CDX plywood, so it's lightweight, easy to install, and it's compatible with any cladding, so you're not locked into one finish or system. FirePoint is especially valuable in wildfire prone regions, but honestly, it's a smart choice for any project where safety is a priority. And when we talked about smarter building science, that's exactly what we mean. Products that both elevate safety and performance within a modern wall assembly. We're not just building to code anymore, we're building to face future challenges head on. So if you're designing for resilience, specifically fire resilience, stall flames and save lives with FirePoint. I'm Matt Reisinger, stay tuned for more right here on Build Science 301. All right, my friends, welcome back to Build Science 301. We're jumping into a roof assembly called an unvented roof assembly. We spent a lot of time in the last episode talking about vented. So now, Steve, let's talk about un <laughs> unvented. You ready? Where You want to start on the detail? Yeah, but I just wanted you to know Kilroy, Kilroy was here. Kilroy was here. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Messing up our logo. Let's talk a little 301. So, like you said, on to unvented roof. Yep. Right? Notice vent is gone. Yep. We don't really care about a ridge vent. We have to solve for everything basically internally. Mm -hmm. Nothing's being released out to the atmosphere, whether it is a cut roof or it is a truss roof. I mean, so, it looks like the same drawing in the last episode, minus a slightly different soffit, right? That's it. Just for, that vent stage. is gone. At this the stage. Doesn't now exist. Let's talk about the challenges we've got here. So the challenge is here, water, pretty much the same. Water's gonna hit, we have a good overhang here that we can solve for there. Um, you know, the, the, the easiest way to solve for water and roofs, put the overhang on. There's, there's nothing that's really gonna change that. But what does change here is, if we put moisture in here, how do we deal with it? Mm -hmm. And not only that, but I'm gonna write I-N, um, MC, initial moisture content, right? And the reason I put that in there and so important is you probably want some type of ventilation mm -hmm. system here for sure, right? So we don't really talk much about mechanicals. We talk more about the details here, but understand you move to an unvented roof. Now we have to take care of all of that stuff inside. We're in a submarine. Yep, that's a great right? way to put it. So we're not, we're not dealing with the outside. We didn't need ventilation before because we're venting the roof. We had ventilation. That's what vented roof means. Um, insulation, same thing, but it's a slightly different game. And in terms of air leakage, this one becomes very, very important because air can take moisture. Yeah. And it can jump on that air train and really have some problems in there. And I'm not talking about through the drywall, but through the ceiling, you and I know it, right? There's plumbing pipes that are happening up here. There's cans or lighting systems mm -hmm. that are happening in there. All of these things are bleeding air up into that attic system that we have to deal with. Yeah, and the other thing that we need to think about too is often we have, when we have an unvented roof, we have HVAC systems in the attic spaces. Uh, and frankly, sometimes, we don't even get into this, sometimes in vented attics we have HVAC, which is not a great idea. Yeah. If I look back at my uh, almost 20 years of building houses in Austin, Texas, 99% of them have been this assembly, minus maybe one, uh, or maybe minus a remodel or two. 
So this unvented roof assembly is, is near and dear to my heart, but it does have a few challenges, and we're gonna get into that in a second. Uh, or I should say there's some solutions to these challenges. We're gonna get into that when we get into solutions. So, you know, you were really gentle. I'm gonna use a slightly different tact <laughs> on uh, talking about this. I'm gonna talk about the idiocy of putting ductwork in there, right? So. Into a vented space, that is. Into a, well, or yeah, into a vented attic space. Um, I mean, we're talking unvented, but let's talk about what happens if we don't vent or don't do unvented and we choose to put it in. So we have insulation there and then we'll put a piece of ductwork in here, All right? Houston, 70 degrees here, 98 degrees there. The attic was 165 degrees. We measured it. Um, and it was actually somewhat ironic because Peter forgot a couple things up there, had to go up there twice. <laughs> and it's like, if you're up there for five, five seconds, like you're already starting to sweat. That's the beef it's, jerky setting on my uh, dehydrator right yeah. there, 165 degrees. So the idiocy of it is somewhere I'm paying a lot of money to make cold air and chilling it. If I'm trying to hit 70, chances are I'm probably making like 55 degree air somewhere, maybe 60 degree air, right? I'm sending it down a duct in 165. And I know what you're going to say, oh, Steve, you don't understand. We insulate the ducts. Ooh, we put R6 on the outside. <laughs> R8 now with new code. Oh, R8 with new code. Ooh, <laughs> we put R8 out there, right? That's like going from a short sleeve t-shirt in zero degrees to a long sleeve t-shirt. It's a great right? point. You know, it's does it really matter at that point? No, it doesn't. And this was a builder's dream home. And I in my um, nice idiotic tact said, you probably would have been better putting the ductwork out here and just nailing it off to the top of the roof. <laughs> it would have been cooler. more energy efficient. It would have been cooler on the roof. He didn't really like that. I bet not, no. But the reality is it's 67 degrees cooler yeah. on the outside of the building. Wow. So if you're gonna put mechanical systems in here, that's why we're talking unvented roof assemblies. That's right. Right? So. So then an unvented roof assembly, instead of this insulation here at the drywall, we're actually talking about insulation at the roof line. Yeah. We're, we probably want to do something like that. Yep. Where all of this is our insulation. Now, when I put that duct in and I put it in here, mm -hmm. It's not 165, it might be 74 degrees up there. Yep, that's right. Right? So far better system. So mm -hmm. let's look at the solutions. Okay, so a solution for a unventilated cut roof, Steve. Yes. So remember, the cut roof, one of the, the challenges, the big challenge there is I only have that dimension to work with. Mm -hmm. And if it's a two by 10, nine and a quarter, two by 12, 11 and a quarter, in Alabama, Missouri, Texas, that probably works and works fine. In New England, not so much. In Minnesota, definitely not. Mm -hmm. So we need to do other things, but we'll talk about what those other things are. Um, in terms of the unvented cut roof here, um, water we take care of by dripping it over, good distance here, check mark, water control, we're taken care of. Like we talked about in the previous, if we're going to put a, a penetration in our roof, we want to keep that up in that upper third mm -hmm. of the roof. That's so right. it sees as little water as it really needs to see. Um, in terms of air leakage, right, we don't have to deal with air leakage here because this is now a conditioned space. So right. any air movement across here is okay. That's part of the air conditioned envelope of the house. Exactly. Air movement across here, not okay. Yep, not good. So we need to solve for that. How did we solve for that? Well, we solve for that in the same way we solve for insulation. So in here, I showed, I believe this is about four inches of closed cell, but again, that gets climate tuned. If you're in Texas, you might be able to get away with two inches. Mm -hmm. Alabama, Missouri, if you go to 
uh, Minnesota, that four inches might in fact become six inches. So. One other quick caveat too, if you're in the South, you could get away with open cell foam. Yes. There's some other things we need to do too to make sure we don't have moisture buildup in there. But we could, uh, oftentimes where I am to meet code, we can do something like 10 inches of open cell foam. Yeah. And that's what that, we did over there. In that roof line here. Yeah, in the trusses. Gotcha. So we're trying to do both of those. So the reason for the closed cell, it's just like our wall. Now, one of the interesting points that I'm going to make here is uh, sheathing, cavity, interior sheathing. Look at what we have here. Sheathing, cavity, sheathing. Mm -hmm. Notice anything similar? Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same damn thing. Yep. Exactly the same. The only difference is this wall is placed on the diagonal and it's been ex oh, it's been expanded just a little bit. So we expanded the dimension here, there, but it's the same, right? So just like in our wall systems, when we talked about cold climates, if you haven't watched it, go back and watch some of the earlier episodes where we talked about above grade walls, we're really trying to control condensation in this area here, mm -hmm. right? Getting that moisture laden air, migrating out, seeing a cold surface, and then condensing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing here. Moisture laden air, we don't want it to condense on the underside of that roof sheathing, because then we have problems. So what we need to do is we need to pad that out and move that first condensing surface outboard. And so that's why this is a closed cell spray foam because it's not air permeable and moisture it's impermeable to, mm -hmm. right? So moisture won't move through. So now that surface temperature doesn't matter. This surface temperature matters. And if you notice thermally on the thermal gradient, this is somewhere about half way through that rafter. Mm. So we significantly have warmed, and it's it's half dimensionally. From an R value, this is probably R4 at say um, five inches, right? So this is 20, but this is seven at four inches. This is R28. So yep. thermally, it's a 60-40 split. Mm -hmm. That's a great right? way to put it. And so then we warm that up significantly so we take our vapor problem out and for the rest of the insulation, we can come in here and we can put in a rock wool bat or we can net the underside and fill the rest with cellulose or fiberglass or- Or open cell foam, that's less Open expensive. cell foam, you can mm -hmm. put that down inside there. All of those kind of work there. So. Can I make one note on this yeah. unvented roof? This is an unvented roof assembly. We got the same soffit and overhang. Uh, one thing though that I do want to mention is this cavity, if this is our insulation, especially if that's foam, let's say, this is just dead airspace, and we actually do want a small amount of airflow in mm -hmm. and out of this space. So what I did at my house with this vented and what I do a lot is I'll either use like a hardy soffit that has pre-perforations, or I'll just put a, like a one inch strip vent along here to make sure that if there is any moisture buildup in here, it has a way to get out, especially in the south where the sun bakes our roof. We just need an escape valve for that moisture to get out. So this is probably what you're used to seeing more in Texas. Yep, that's very, very common these days right. among custom builders. Even some production builders are starting to use this assembly more and more. Yeah, you know, water, okay. As far as insulation, we come up, we do whatever the the code required insulation is there. This can be open cell. And you know, since we're talking about challenges and solutions, one of the things I wanna point out, cause I know there's somebody watching and saying, oh my God, Steve, I can't believe you're suggesting that we use open cell foam. One of the challenges in the building industry that I've come to understand because we work all over the country. I can put cellulose in the drawings and go to Texas. But the conversation always ends up something like, well, we can probably do cellulose. I think we might be able to find somebody that can do it. Mm -hmm. But we usually do open cell and it's far less expensive. Mm. And so now the homeowner looks at me, client, and says, 
Like, I know we want to do the right thing, Steve. I know maybe some people have an aversion to using spray foam, but there's now a delta here of thousands of dollars, as well as we're at even a higher risk because we're putting in an insulation that pretty much doesn't get used down here, hmm. right? I mean, cellulose gets used in a lot of places, but not necessarily in roofs. Yeah. If you went to insulators, they're all going to say, oh, we just foam the roof. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot less expensive. And, you know, I'm not beating up on insulators, but perspective is a large portion of how things get priced. When um, subcontractors don't want to do things, that price seems to, to, to make the decision for you. That's right. Right? So it becomes a challenge. So we're talking about real-world solutions. From a building science perspective, does this work? Yes. Environmental perspective, that is your opinion, but I'm telling you why we chose to draw the open cell here. And as far as doing that, that solves a lot of problems, right? Because the vapor can be handled down in here. We'll just keep our RH at a nice controlled level. But one of the important things is now you can put ductwork up here, right? And that is A-OK -okay because it's on the conditioned side, not the unconditioned side. But the one thing that gets missed quite often is nobody rarely puts a vent into the attic space from that ductwork. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not heating it to the full level of comfort that you're doing the rooms down below. You're really just trying to dilute the air up there so your moisture content stays the same across here. Yep. Right? So, you know, you're probably talking something like maybe 50 CFM per 500 square feet. Mm -hmm. You know, somewhere in that number. It's a, a four-inch duct in a 2,000-square-foot house. Maybe there's three or four vents in the attic. And I would put them at the ends. Don't put all three of them in the middle where you end up with these microclimates across the roof, mm -hmm. spread them out. So you, you really want to shake that house up in terms of moisture content. Yeah, that's great. Right? So if you're going to put that ductwork up there, put it up there, but make sure that you're bleeding a little. And the same is, you know, we didn't talk about it in crawl spaces, but unvented crawl spaces, you want to do the same thing. You run the ductwork through there, and it's a nice conditioned space, but you want to make sure you're bleeding a little bit of that conditioned air into that system. You know, as far as insulation, like I said, it's what's code required. We talked about the vapor there. And of course, air leakage, this is gonna take care of that system for us, right? So it's a pretty straightforward system. You can see, you know, just from everything that we wrote on the solution, it's a pretty simple way to get around, especially down here in Texas, getting all of our ductwork in the attic and solving the problem. It's really good, Steve. I think we, uh, we hit all the basics here. A lot to talk about, and we'll go into greater depth in future uh, build science as we get into 401 and 501, but this is a really good understanding of what we're looking at for an unvented cut roof. That being said, like our friend Joe Stebrick says, it's not rocket science. Build science. Don't forget. We got quizzes. We got booklets after this, so the fun doesn't stop at the vibe board. That's right. So at the end of each episode of Build Science 301, you're going to have the opportunity to take a five-question quiz, answer all five of those right, and then go through all 11 modules on Build Science 301, and our team's going to send you a certificate that says that you passed Build Science 301. And we have that for 101 and 201. Right, Steve? There we go. Don't forget, this is totally free. There is no charge. I think you should really take the time and make sure you get recognized for your efforts and your time. Get that certificate. This is a really big deal, and this is a good foundation for the rest of your career. Build Science 301, a Build Original Series brought to you by Anderson Windows and Doors, Arklin, and Huber Engineered Woods.